Hey, hello, Jacob here. First and foremost, I want to congratulate Steve Hutchinson. That's right. Steve Hutchinson on making the 2020 NFL Hall of Fame. Yeah, Steve Hutchinson was a former offensive lineman for the Vikings from 2006 to 2011 and was a very, very crucial piece of our offensive line, especially uh, for the first few years of Adrian Peterson because between him and uh, Bryant McKinney, two mammoth men on our offensive line, they basically helped Adrian Peterson shine. And I mean shine. Because remember, the 296-yard game? Steve Hutchinson was blocking for that. Chester Taylor, Steve Hutchinson was blocking for him. Steve Hutchinson, one of those guys who, you know, offensive linemen never really get a lot of credit or a lot of love, per se. But they are very, very important. And uh, I'm happy to say that another Viking goes into the Hall of Fame. Because uh, I know the Vikings have had some really, really notable offensive linemen go in the Hall of Fame. Probably the most notable would be Randall McDaniel. But yeah, so with all that being said, again, congratulations to Steve Hutchinson. And uh, I could probably make like a 20-minute video on him. But <laughs> now on to... The main event tomorrow, the Super Bowl. I just figured I'd come on and kind of give uh, an overall prediction or whatever, but frankly, I could really care less. I'm just hoping for a good game. And, uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get into it. So if you don't know by now, or if you've been living under a rock for the last two weeks, the San Francisco 49ers will be taking on the Kansas City Chiefs in Miami for Super Bowl 54. The Kansas City Chiefs making it to the Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years. And the San Francisco 49ers going for their sixth. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it should be a very, very intriguing matchup between, well, one of the most high-powered offenses and one of the more shut-down defenses versus yet another pretty powerful offense against a very underrated defense that has really stepped it up over, I'd say, the last 10 to 12 weeks or so for the Chiefs. So, it'll be interesting to see. Talent-wise, at this point, I would have to give the slight edge on offense to the Chiefs just because Patrick Mahomes is magical back there as a quarterback. Not to mention, again, when you have an Olympic 4x100 relay track team as your receivers. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't hurt either. Especially when you can throw it in the area code, and more than likely they'll come down with it. And of course you can't forget about the one, the only, a Travis Kelsey. That dude is a bona fide stud. In more than one sense of the word. <laughs> and I will say though, with that being said though, the San Francisco 49ers also probably have the other stud tight end in the league these days in George Kittle, who again is another guy that, oh baby, he just seems like, both him and uh, Kelsey just seem like guys you want to go grab a beer with after, you know, like a college frat party or just, you know, <laughs> all that stuff, so it'll be exciting to see both of them, and uh, again, the defensive lines for both teams, who can get the pressure on the quarterback, that's probably, honestly, Who's going to win the game is which defensive line can get to the other quarterback. Because if you can't get to the other quarterbacks, you're going to get picked apart. And yeah, like I said, also with the 49ers too, they also have some really good offensive weapons. Not just the Chiefs, but I mean, they, they have some very talented pieces. Including Raheem Mostert, who literally ran the 49ers into the Super Bowl last week, and uh, former Bronco, and also former player of the jersey that I got at the uh, Bronco Stadium, is now a San Francisco 49er in Emmanuel Sanders, who caught one of the, 
Well, at least for me as a Vikings fan, one of the biggest plays of this season for us because his catch basically cemented their field goal range back in week 16. And thanks to the right leg of Robbie Gold, literally kicked us into the playoffs. So again, thank you for that. <laughs> Fortunately, when we actually faced them, we couldn't do anything against them. But again, what it could have should have blah, blah, blah. I could be bitter all day. But <laughs> at the end of the day, we had a pretty good season. And how fitting would it be for just one last crazy game? Because are we going to get something similar to the Week 17 Sunday night game where the Seahawks ended up literally, like, what, three-quarters of a yard short, if that, from potentially totally shaking up the NFC? And who knows what would have happened if, you know, Jacob Hollister would have gotten to the end zone. Who knows if the 49ers would have been the team. Who knows? It could have been the Packers. Or the Saints, or... Hell, even the Vikings, for all I know, you know, uh, you never know. Like I say, it's it's crazy how literally one yard separated the whole NFC playoff picture. And then, of course, yeah, that so many woulda, coulda, shouldas this year. But it's just at the end of the day, the two, well, at least one of the teams I thought was going to be in made it in the Kansas City Chiefs. If I honestly had to pick, it was probably either between the Saints or the Niners. But again, with the Niners first year of having literally everybody healthy and all that stuff you know so I think it's safe to say Jimmy Garoppolo might have a bright future ahead of him as well as Mahomes as well as I mean the NFL these days especially with all the young quarterbacks and all the really really key players coming in will hopefully push the NFL forward and keep pushing it forward because Boy, I'll tell you what, it's fun to watch all these guys. But yeah, kind of wrapping everything up here. Again, if I'm going to pick, I'm going to go with the Chiefs. But, as I said before, if the 49ers defense can step it up, then I'll probably go with the Niners. But my gut is telling me Chiefs. And Andy Reid will finally win the big one. And maybe go to the uh, buffet line in the White House. <laughs> but yeah, I think. <laughs> but seriously, though, I hope the Chiefs win. And uh, here's to a good game to wrap up the 100th season of the NFL and also go into the XFL, which will be something else I'll kind of touch on. You know, watch a couple of games and kind of give you my overall opinions on that. Hopefully, this lasts longer than the AAF. Because that was an absolute, well, <laughs> that was a mess. So, until we meet again, this is Jacob. Have a good night, and on to the Super Bowl, baby. Hopefully it's a good one.